Welcome to the Revolution Church Podcast. Before we begin, we'd like to remind you that our ministry is supported 100% by listeners like you. To make your 100% tax-deductible donation today, please visit revolutionchurch.com slash donate. You can also learn more by clicking the donate section on the website. Hello and welcome to Revolution. As always, thanks for tuning in and listening. Is this mic a little hot? Hot mic. Move it back a little bit. Um, So a week from today, we will be meeting in Bryant Lake Bowl. We'll be back with uh, a live audience. And it's been, I know, over a year, almost two years, that I've been recording in the office and I just want to thank everybody who's been sticking by me and sticking with revolution through this time of transition. Um, I've had a lot of ups and downs and, uh, just really grateful for you folks who've, uh, been there for the church and been there for me. Um, it means a lot. So thank you so much uh, for continuing uh, to listen and continuing to support, uh, revolution. And I'm excited to uh, to be back in uh, full swing next uh, next week. And very nervous, a little nervous, because you're kind of like maybe I will be by myself still, <laughs> just in a much bigger room. But you know that's how it goes. Um, that kind of rolls into things. It's, uh, today I want to talk about doubt. And I've talked about doubt in the past. And, you know, some people think it's the the hip thing to do is to doubt. Um, But doubting is just a fact of life. Um, It's a part of who we are. It's a part of what we do. And it's in our DNA. And it's it's good because we want to know things. And we want to see things. And we want things proven to us. And so the, the big doubt of Scripture of course, is in um, John twenty twenty four, and our good old friend Thomas. So I want to read that with read that to you. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, "We have seen the Lord." But he said to them, "Unless I see the marks on the nails in his hands, and put my finger in his marks of the nails." In my, my hands, in his side, I will not believe. So, doubting Thomas. Poor guy got stuck with that because of this moment. And people still say, don't be a doubting Thomas. But there's a certain amount of wisdom to this. I mean, he saw Christ dead. He saw Christ die. He saw it was over, and, um, you know, if someone said they saw my mother or saw someone like that, or you know, I, would, I wouldn't believe them either until I saw it myself. So I think that Thomas is not a grave mistake. I think Thomas was just probably like the majority of us, uh, Want it? We would want proof. And you say, well, Jay, you know, we all have to live by faith in, in Christ Jesus. And, you know, well, I mean, if I guess we believe in Jesus and believe in the resurrection, we definitely are living by faith. Um, but I can also see Thomas's point. And sometimes I feel like Thomas. You know, don't we always wish we had a time machine at times? go back and change things or go back and see things or go back and pr- see if Jesus was 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 alive or resurrected you know if there was a video camera outside the tomb so a week later the disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them although the doors were shut Jesus came and stood amongst them and said peace be with you then he said to Thomas put your finger here and see my hands Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. One of the things that this shows is that, you know, Thomas was 
very familiar with Jesus' scars, with Jesus' wounds, Jesus' crucifixion. Tom, Thomas answered to him, Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who seen, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Um so most believers today are well, all believers today have not seen and live by faith. But doubt is a part of faith. Um Paul Tillich's famous quote is doubt is not the opposite of faith. It is one element of faith. It's built in there. And uh, I'll be honest with you, I live a lot of life in doubt. There are times where I go, you know, am I just following in a family tradition? You know, is is this stuff real? Um, getting stuck in moments where you feel like you just can't get out and that God doesn't show up and that there is no God or, you know, or your certain image of God that you've created isn't there. You know, those times create a lot of doubt. But if doubt is part of faith, then we must have doubt. Now, on the other side of this, you've got James. And James is a different different character you know he's a different kind of person um differs from paul the apostle differs from uh that messages differ but let's see what paul has to i mean james has to say about doubt he says if any of you are lacking wisdom ask god who gives all generously and ungrudgingly and it will give be given to you but ask in faith, never doubting. For the one who doubts is like the wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For the doubter, being double-minded and unstable in every way, must not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Okay, so I'm going to just go straight out and say, uh, I don't agree with James here. Um, there's a lot of things that I struggle with James and this is one of them. Uh, I don't even know if I would say struggle with James is that I don't agree with James. Maybe, you know, because we have verses like, you know, Jesus said, that if you have the faith, the size of a mustard seed. Now, if you have small faith, that means you have a lot of doubt. You see those two exist together. And so, James often seemed to, you know, and, and, and as we would say in the South, bless his heart, you know, he seemed to be 100% sold out and had complete unquestionable faith and good for him. But the fact was, is as a teacher, he made it standard sometimes it almost seemed impossible to reach. The Bible is a collection of books. It's a library. You know, it's not always going to line up right. And um, that's hard for some people to accept. But, you know, it, it makes life a lot easier and you have to do a lot less acrobatic theology if you just come to that conclusion. Um, let's look at Hebrews right next to James. Hebrews 11, 1 says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the convictions of things not seen. So, faith is the insurance of things hoped for. The conviction of things not seen. That sounds a lot like hope. Now, if you jump over to Romans, I got to get back there. Uh, 
Romans 8. Twenty four says, For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought to. But the very Spirit intercedes with signs of too deep for words, and God who searches the heart knows what is the mind is in the mind of the Spirit, because of the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know all things work together for the good for those who love God, who are called according to God's purpose. Now back at the beginning for in hope we were saved. Interesting words there that Paul's saying. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for we hope for what is not seen. But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. So faith requires patience. Faith requires hope. Uh, and by the very definition, hope has doubt in it because it's saying you don't hope for something that you have, you hope for something that you don't have. It's really interesting. Um, to doubt is to be genuine. I mean, how can we not doubt when there's so much suffering in the world and there's so much tragedy in the world? You know, I, I don't know. How I, I could live a life without doubt. I know in my own life and my own struggles, you know, there's times that I have really great doubt because, you know, I don't want to be depressed anymore. I don't want to deal with depression. I don't want to deal with mental health issues. I just want to be okay, you know. And I was grew up in a, the, you know, name it and claim it and faith movement where, <laughs> you know, you just prayed, prayed, prayed the sickness away. You know, God was going to show up. And when you can have that programmed in your mind, even though you might know that it, that's not how it works. It's still one of those things that was, you know, built into me and raised. And you go, oh, where's my faith? I don't have enough faith, you know. Or you go, man, is this stuff just made up? And and that's what that kind of name it, claim it uh, theology does. Is eventually, you know, things don't show up and prayers aren't always answered. Prayers are often not answered. And so, what does that do? I think that goes back to Romans, where uh, the Spirit intercedes for us, and there's a point where we have to just trust that. So, if you're struggling with doubt, if you're going through doubt, be assured that you're not alone, for one, and two, that it is a part of your faith, and... You know, maybe you come by from a James perspective and you think, well, you're going to be torn and twisted and moved all over the place. Well, that might be true. You know, you may be uh, you may be twisted and, 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 and turned, you know, because you're, you're in belief, not believing, having faith, not having faith. You know, those are. Those are things that that come with that, come with that struggle, come with doubt. So maybe James had a point that maybe we will be tossed around in the sea a little bit. Maybe it will be a struggle. Um, I know that there were times, times I longed for when I was had the unquestionable faith, you know, and didn't have so much brain full of so much theology and and philosophy and, and, and history and, and things like that. You know, there was a time where ignorance was bliss, but, uh, you know, and that was a nice place to be at a time, but it was an easier place to be an easier place to preach even, um, do my job. But now that's changed. And so there's times I come speak when I 
struggling with the fact of, you know, is there a God? Is God what I think God is? You know, was Jesus the Son of God? I mean, those are true doubts that I struggle with, and I think we all struggle with. And uh, I feel it's important for me as a pastor to say that and make that clear, that doubt is part of faith. And to continue to, to believe what Paul Tillich said, that doubt is not the opposite of faith, it is an element of faith. And it's funny, I put this on Facebook and I had a few people really disagree with that. And that's okay. That's, that's part of it. But if you're doubting in your life and uh, doubting in your faith, you're not alone. It happens to us all. And uh, that's just part of faith and it's part of growing in faith. And maybe knowing a little bit more who you are and... Uh, you know, having questions and looking for answers. That uh, leads to wisdom. So thanks for listening, everybody. Um, look forward to talking to you next time when this, uh, the sermon will be recorded from uh, Bryant Lake Bowl. So that'll be really cool. Um, as long as everything works out. We've got all sorts of sound equipment and things like that that we have to work with there. So... <laughs> Fingers crossed. I have a little doubt, but I have hope and faith that it'll all work out. Um, thank you so much. Once again, thanks for your support. Thanks for standing with us. And uh, this is Revolution Church.